Hi, I'm Ben Greasley, and in this video we're going to look at image-based lighting within Arnold. We're going to be looking at our Sky Dome light, which is our light of choice when working with image-based lighting, and we're going to be looking at all the settings involved with that, how we get the best out of it, and we're going to be looking at the HDRI maps themselves, and the best way we can create them and use them within Arnold to get the best looking renders with the quickest render time. So we can see initially we have our same lit scene as the previous example, and there are no lights in my scene. So if I set my Arnold to render, I'll just get a black environment. If I then go to my Arnold tab to lights and create a sky dome light, we will see that we get a sky dome light created in the shape of a sphere. And this is lighting our scene from all directions. And if I render, I'll get a basic GI render of my whole shot. And we can see that this lighting is very general, it's coming from every direction, it's just lighting our scene quite easily. The sphere around our shot is indicative, it's not an actual size, the lighting isn't coming from this precise space. It's just to give us a rough idea as to what we're really working with. So I can scale down my light, and I can move it, and my render will still appear exactly the same. If I rotated my Sky Dome light with a HDRI map applied onto it, then we would notice a difference in the viewport. I'm going to return this to its default size and position. As well as the transformation controls, the Sky Dome light is controlled by all of these primary properties within the Sky Dome light shape. Initially, we have color that we're able to control. So this is a white light at the moment, but I am able to specify this to be any color that I choose. as we can see. I'm also able to specify the intensity of my Sky Dome light by increasing and decreasing the intensity slider. The resolution relates into the HDRI map and we will be getting onto this information later. The use color temperature allows us to specify a color temperature for our shot, so I can make my color temperature very dark. This will require me to restart my IPR viewport. We get very cool colors, or I can pull it much higher, and get very blue colors. We are able to specify if it should illuminate our scene by default, or if it should illuminate the diffuse and specular separately. We also have control for the format of HDRI map we will be using. We can use mirror balls, angular maps, cubic maps, and lat longs, which we will be seeing later on. We have controls for exposure, as we do with our other light types. And we have controls for samples. And the samples control is where we get rid of most of our noise within our lights. Using my Sky Dome light, I'm going to trigger an initial render. And we can see that we're getting a very, very noisy render, that our shadows aren't looking good here at all. And this is being caused by our Sky Dome light. In this situation, we do not need to increase our diffuse samples at all. They are perfectly fine at 2, that's all that we need. We need to increase the number of samples within the AI Sky Dome light itself. Now, we need to remember that this sample value is squared and then multiplied by the square of the AA samples. So we need to be very careful with this. The slider will go from 1 all the way to 100, but we don't ever need to move past 3 or 4 for it to work properly. In this case, I'm going to set my samples to 3 and re-render and have a look at the improvement. And we can see we have improved the grain and noise in the bottom part of our shot. If I increase it again, we should be able to get rid of it. And as we can see, we are now getting a much smoother render coming from that light source. Understanding that using the sample amount within the Sky Dome light to remove noise from our render will save you a lot more time than just increasing the anti-aliasing samples and the diffuse samples accordingly. With the basic settings of the Sky Dome light explained, we can now move on to using a HDRI map with our Sky Dome light. 
I have a HDRI map that we have prepared for this example, and we can see that this is in a lat long format, where it is twice as long as it is tall. And this is a 7000 pixel HDRI map. We can see that this is a floating point file type. This is a HDR file type, which Arnold is particularly happy with to use as an image format. We can see that I have standard values of between 0 and 1 in most of our image. And then as I go into the sky, we'll see that we have floating point values of higher than 1. And then as I come in closer to the sun, we will see that we get very, very high values as the sun is much, much brighter than anything else in the image. Capturing HDRI maps that get the full dynamic range of the sun cannot be done with a DSLR on its own. You will require neutral density filters and a variation in ISO settings and offsets in order to be able to get the full effect needed. And we are going to apply this image to our light within Maya. We plug our HDRI light into the color input of our sky dome light. And once the map has loaded, we will then see it appearing in the environment in our shot. If I zoom out, we will see how it has mapped it onto our light. I can see the source of my sun and the rest of the environment. And now if I render my shot, we should get the accurate light color and sun direction and shadows from our HDRI map. As we can see, we are getting very, very bright values from our sunny day, and we're getting very crisp shadows from our sun in our scene as well. Once we have brought in our HDRI map, we then need to consider some of our other specific settings within our sky dome light. The first we need to consider is resolution. The HDRI map has a resolution of 7300 pixels, and so I need to specify that in my resolution tab. This is required so that Arnold can do a good calculation and get good shadow detail from our HDRI map, especially in scenes that have a bright, small point of light like our sun in this shot. We would also need to specify the format. In this situation, we are using a lat long, so I don't need to change this, but if we were working from an angular map or a mirrored ball, we would need to change it accordingly. With the resolution set correctly, we can see that we are getting much better shadow detail along this edge as well, which is important for our render. Arnold uses a method called multiple importance sampling to give more information to the brighter areas of our HDRI map, which is why it is important to enter in the resolution value. If you are getting a HDRI render where you end up with lots of noise and burnt out fireflies, it is probably the sky dome light resolution that needs to be increased in order to reduce this problem. We can see from our render that we are getting good interaction with our scene, that we are getting the correct shadow and lighting direction and lighting color, but we're not getting any other type of interaction. I'm going to change some of the shader parameters of our character's head in order to see better these effects. I'm going to remove my diffuse weight and increase my reflection amount. What we will see as I increase my reflection weight is I will not get my HDRI map reflected in my character. The reflection weight only considers my indirect secondary reflections. And as we have mapped the HDRI map onto a direct light source, we cannot see it this way. The way that we get our reflections from our HDRI map in our object is by using the specular setting. If I increase my specular weight up to 1 and pull my roughness down to 0, we will see my HDRI map accurately reflected in our object. If I wish to see the HDRI map in our render directly, I can do so using a sky shader. We apply the sky shader from the Arnold render menu. We go to the environment menu and right click in the space next to background. From here we are able to create a sky shader. And what this will do is it will create a white sphere very similar to our light sphere. And I'm going to scale this down so it's a little easier to see. And this sphere will apply 
a white background to the background of our render. And I want to attach our HDRI map into the color input of the sky attribute. And we can see once it has been attached, we get the HDRI map as the background. However, if I rendered this shot now, my sky attributes would cast shadows into my scene and it would provide diffuse and glossy reflections as well. I don't need any of these as I have that coming from my light in my scene already. So I can disable my glossies, disable my diffuse and disable cast shadows. So now when I render my scene, my sky dome light will provide the lighting and interaction for my scene and my AI sky shape will provide the background information for it. So now we can see we're getting the lighting contribution from the light and the background information from the sky shader. The sky dome light within Arnold is a very straightforward light to use. The problems you will come across will mainly be in the HDRI maps that you have produced or have been provided with and dealing with that using the resolution settings and the exposure settings within the sky dome light will give you the best results you can use.